Council Member Doug Young has our prayer and pledge. Mr. Young. Please join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the many blessings that you have given us. Be with our local heroes, the police officers, the firefighters, the EMTs, and many others who have served us. We ask for, their, for, we ask for the safety of our troops deployed in harm's way all over the world. Be with this council and staff as we work to make Murfreesboro a great place to live. And Heavenly Father, be with the people of Haiti as they have witnessed a terrible tragedy. Give them strength and hope. These things we ask in your name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I don't know who moved the American flag. <laughs> who thought that was it huge? Wasn't right. They switched them. All right. Evidently, we're going for states' rights. <laughs> That's the ledge count, Mayor. Went to redo. <laughs> All right. Since the council meeting hasn't started yet. <laughs> All right, at this point, we will start our council meeting and welcome to the Murfreesboro City Council, January 21st, 2010. And we'll endeavor to get the flags moved if we can. Yes. Thanks. Okay. Council members, you have before your consent agenda. If you have any questions, now is a good time to raise those. If not, I'll accept a motion that we accept our consent agenda. So moved. Second. Motion and second. Please call the roll. Vice Mayor Bradford. Aye. Mr. Evans. Aye. Mr. Gilly. Aye. Mr. McFarland. Aye. Mr. Washington. Aye. Mr. Young. Aye. Mayor Bragg. Aye. This time we'll consider for passage on third and final reading an ordinance to amend Chapter 34 of the Zoning Ordinance Floodplain Zoning. Move for passage on third and final reading. Second. Motion and second. Please call the roll, Ms. Wright. Vice Mayor Bradshaw. Aye. Mr. Edwards. Aye. Mr. Gilly. Aye. Mr. McFarland. Aye. Mr. Washington. Aye. Mr. Young. Aye. Mayor Bragg. Aye. This time we'll consider for passage on third and final reading an ordinance to rezone an area located along Old Las Casas Highway, Rocky Lane, and Gunnerson Avenue to a local commercial CL district. Move for approval on third reading. Second. All right, you have a motion and second. Please call the roll, Ms. Wright. Vice Mayor Bratcher. Aye. Mr. Everett. Aye. Mr. Gilly. Aye. Mr. McFarland. Aye. Mr. Washington. Aye. Mr. Young. Aye. Mayor Bragg. Aye. This time we'll consider for passage on third and final reading an ordinance to amend 6.96 acres of the Aurora Place portion of Sunset Ridge PRD located along Joby Jackson Parkway. So moved. Second. Have a motion and second. Please call. Vice Mayor Bratcher. Aye. Mr. Edwards. Aye. Mr. Gilly. Aye. Mr. McFarland. Aye. Mr. Washington. Aye. Mr. Young. Aye. Mayor Bragg. Aye. At this time, we'll consider for passage on third and final reading an ordinance to rezone an area located along Veterans Parkway and Franklin Road to a commercial fringe CF district. So moved. Second. Motion and second. Please call the roll, Ms. Wright. Vice Mayor Bradshaw. Aye. Mr. Everett. Aye. Mr. Gilly. Aye. Mr. McFarland. Aye. Mr. Washington. Aye. Mr. Young. Aye. Mayor Bragg. Aye. At this time, we'll consider for passage on third and final reading an ordinance to rezone an area located south of Highway 99 and west of St. Andrews Drive to a commercial French CF district. So moved. Second. Motion and second. Please call the roll. Vice Mayor Bratcher. Aye. Mr. Edwards. Aye. Mr. Gilly. Aye. Mr. McFarland. Aye. Mr. Washington. Aye. Mr. Young. Aye. Mayor Bragg. Aye. We'll consider now for passage on third and final reading an ordinance amending Murfreesboro City Code, Chapter 29, Subdivisions, Plats, and Maps, Section 29-5, dealing with fees for site plans and preliminary subdivision plats. Move this passage on third reading. Second. Motion and second. Please call the roll. 
Vice Mayor Bratcher. Aye. Mr. Edwards. Aye. Mr. Gilly. Aye. Mr. McFarland. Aye. Mr. Washington. Aye. Mr. Young. Aye. Mayor Bragg. Aye. At this time, we'll consider for passage on third and final reading an ordinance. Amending the Murfreesboro City Code Chapter 4, Alcoholic Beverages, Section 4-46, dealing with beer permits. Move for approval. Second. Motion and second. Please call the roll, Ms. Wright. Vice Mayor Bratcher. Aye. Mr. Edwards. Aye. Mr. Gilly. Aye. Mr. McFarland. Aye. Mr. Washington. Aye. Mr. Young. Aye. Mayor Bragg. Aye. At this time, we'll hear a presentation from Ms. Ronnie Shaw with regards to one book, Community Read Selection. Ms. Shaw, welcome. Hi, thank you, and thank you all for your time. I am Ronnie Shaw, the Executive Director of Read to Succeed. Read to Succeed is our local literacy initiative. We promote <laughs> literacy and reading in Rutherford County, and we do that through large public events, uh, like our Reading in the Schools Day, our Reading Rally, our Unplug and Read, and our One Book, which I'm going to tell you about tonight. And we also have age-specific programs, like our sixth grade spelling bee, our high school arts conference, our family literacy programs, and our adult literacy program where we provide tutors one-on-one -on -one to meet with adult learners. And folks who might be interested in our programming or volunteering should check out our website, which is at readtosucceed.org. And I have some uh, new brochures I'm going to leave for you folks um, on the council here to, to enjoy in our uh, website is in there also and contact information. Uh, we do every year pick a book along with our collaborators. None of our programs do we do on our own. We work with the city schools, the county schools, the Chamber of Commerce, MTSU, and many, many businesses and other folks. And to do this initiative, um, we, we pick a book and we just ask folks in the community to read it. That's all you have to do is read the book and enjoy it. We're hoping to have some conversation um, about uh, a book. Um, this year the title is The Soloist and it's by Steve Lopez. It's a an, an very uh, readable story. It's about a gentleman who's a columnist at the LA Times who makes friends with a homeless man who happens to be an ex-Juilliard student and a wonderful musician. And so the story is about their relationship um, and it's fascinating. So um, as you all know, I hit the county commission and the three city councils and the Rutherford County School Board and the Murfreesboro City School Board all in January and February and I asked the leaders of our community to take the lead in reading uh, and show the rest of the community that literacy does matter. So I am here to offer this book to uh, the highest bidder, no, no, I mean the first taker. Uh, no, the first taker, for sure. Um, and, and I just want to say that um, the, the city council here in Murfreesboro has been a great friend to read to succeed. You guys always support us, um, send us spellers, um, when necessary for celebrity events um, and come out to do mayor's awards and, and stuff like that. And it really does make a difference. It really says to the community that you guys care. So uh, that's my little preamble for anybody who's thought about it now, wants to take this book. Here it is, ready to go. It's a big print. <laughs> what did you say? What did you say, Councilman Young? Uh, is, it, is it available in big print? <laughs> what about Mr. Brash? You want to know if there's a lot of pictures? In um, well, there aren't pictures, but there has been a movie made about it, Mr. Bratcher. And so you could take the book and see the movie and then try to fumble through. Ms. Shaw, I would love to read Thank you so much. I appreciate that, and Mr. McFarland. Do you know how to spell sombrero? S O M B R E R O. Sombrero. I, I think that Mayor Bragg has a word for you, too, he'd like to spell. Uh, mascara, and I still don't know. <laughs> well, you can, you can all know, I don't know if you get comfort out of this or not, but all around the county, wherever I go, people will walk up to me like our very own Chief Glenn Christman and immediately start spelling words. His was serendipity. Okay. So um, I have traumatized many leaders of this community. <laughs> You never know who might be next. Did, you, did Chief Christman get beat by a mascot that couldn't even speak? No, we don't need to bring that up. <laughs> no, the mascot did did a very good job. Um, this year's winner was Vincent Windrow of the Celebrity Spelling Bee, and he was certainly fabulous. Yes. You must have practiced a lot. Well, Ms. Yes. Shaw, thank you very much. And, and if thank you. If you want to deliver that to Councilmember McFarland, that'd be great. 
and uh, I'm sure he'll want to share that with the rest of the council members as after he finishes it we'll be able to tell you how quickly he was able to accomplish <laughs> his task. I'm sure the rest of the council will join me Michelle in going to a local bookstore to buy our own copy. Or our very own local library. Or our very own. That's yes right. there are many copies floating around please feel free to pick one up. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks a lot. Thanks for being with us tonight. At this time, we'll consider recommendations of the Parks and Recreation Director with regards to bids for the renovation of the Sportscom indoor-outdoor pools. Welcome, Mr. Goodwin. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> Honorable Mayor, members of the City Council, it's a pleasure to be here tonight to present to, to you the bids for the renovation of the Sportscom indoor and outdoor pool. Uh, if you recall, on October the 21st, I came to the City Council and asked for architectural engineering services to develop the plan specifications and the bidding documents for the renovation of those two pools. Uh, just uh, to go back, um, it was in 2004 when we first engaged Johnson and Bailey in looking at the renovation of the indoor outdoor pool and sports car. And the report that was generated at that time showed that the both pools need renovation and there was particular problems at that time. And since those six years have passed, uh, we have uh, continued to increase the number of problems that we have, deck sinking, uh, filtration systems that are failing. Matter of fact, last year, Mr. Nate Williams, our aquatics coordinator who is in the audience, uh, we actually had him inside one of the uh, filters, one of the big 84-inch filters, trying to replace some of the interior portion just to make it through the summer. And we re really kept our fingers crossed just to make sure that we got through that particular point. Uh, we had many complaints from the public <coughs> saying that, uh, when are you going to do something to this pool? We had other requests of, it would be really nice to have a, a, a nice water slide or something that would appeal to a broader audience for the public. And so one of the things that you will find if you look at trends uh, over the past years, what they're doing is they're taking old pools just like we have. Sportscom was built in 1987. It's 22 years old. Most lives of pools run somewhere around 15 to 20 years. We're at 22 years, and we're experiencing a lot of the things that you see with a 22-year-old pool. Um, so, you know, we're, we're really operating at this point to where we're telling the council, uh, if, if you do not consider this favorably tonight, we do not believe we can open the outdoor pool, which is one of our most popular venues uh, in the city. Uh, we have thousands of people to come to the outdoor pool each year, and quite frankly, uh, we think this is this is a good move. Uh, we've got uh, good bids, we think, for this. Um, we have a very aggressive schedule. Matter of fact, what we're going to try to do is have this pool open by May 27th, which is the beginning of the new swim season. Um, but just to reemphasize, I think we're at a point right now where we have to make a decision whether we are going to have an outdoor pool or not. Um, when we did <coughs> consider the renovations of the outdoor pool, uh, we looked at what were the latest trends, what were some of the things that we could do to provide a better venue for our citizens. What could we do that would make it more enjoyable? Uh, when we looked at converting the old outdoor pool to an, uh, a, a water park, uh, it was said by our pool consultants that our participation would go up somewhere between 30 and 50 percent, and we would draw some of the people that we hadn't gotten to the pool, the teen population, uh, that is always a target audience of trying to find some kind of viable recreation for them. Um, broader for families, for smaller children. We just really think this is the way to go. And I think the other plus here is the fact that with the increase in participation, we will also see an increase in our revenues, which should cover the cost and make the pool self-sustaining in terms of operation. 
So I think there's several benefits to what we're trying to achieve here. We did receive bids on January the 19th. We received five bids. The low bid was submitted by Sane Construction Company in the amount of $3,250,000. Johnson & Bailey, our architects, has reviewed that. Uh, they feel like Sane Construction meets all of the requirements set forth in the bid, and they do feel like they can adhere to our very aggressive construction schedule. And based on that, uh, staff is recommending that we go with a low bid from Sane Construction Company in the, mid, in the amount of $3,250,000 for the renovation of the pool. Of course, that would be contingent upon any type of legal review from Ms. McGannon's office and the uh, contractor getting all of the uh, documents that the city would require. Um, the other thing that I wanted to speak to, now that we know uh, what the cost of the renovation of those two projects are, the total cost would be $3,463,142. We do anticipate putting that in the 2010 capital request. We did come to the council on November the 19th and asked for a refunding resolution, which was approved in the amount of $3.2 million. Mr. Lyle Lynch from uh, Johnson & Bailey is here tonight, and we are over that initial estimate because uh, there were several things that during the plans and specifications that we ran into in terms of compliance that was okay in 1987, in terms of building the pool, but when you get to 2010, health codes, other things have changed and some of the conditions there. So I would like uh, Mr. Lynch to come up and address those and uh, let you know what we ran into in terms of uh, additional cost. Mr. Lynch. Mr. Lynch, welcome. Uh, Mayor, members of council, um, Plans were reviewed by this body in November, and uh, contract documents were prepared based upon those plans that were reviewed and approved by the council at that time. We had a budgetary number, and we're roughly a quarter million dollars over that number. I wanted to spend just a minute explaining why that has occurred. The, uh, as we started preparing plans and specs uh, for the project, a couple of interesting things we ran into that had to be addressed. One was that the existing pool drainage is spilled onto grade in the property uh, east of the parking lot between Sportscom and the airport runway. When they drain the pool or when they backwash the filters, that water is simply spilled onto grade. And that's a current condition, been there since 1987. Uh, during the course of preparing documents, Murfreesboro Water and Sewer Department uh, determined that this drainage has to be rerouted into a sanitary sewer system. Um, when the filters are backwashed, a large quantity of water comes out very quickly. Uh, to accommodate the available flow capacity by Murfreesboro Water and Sewer, uh, we're installing a underground, let's see, it's a 19 foot 4 inch long by 11 foot 4 inch wide by 6 foot 10 inch deep uh, underground concrete holding tank. So when that surge comes out, then it can be spilled into the, the Murfreesboro sewer system at a, at a slower rate so we don't overwhelm the system. Um, the second thing we ran into is we received a soils report from Core Property Sciences uh, on December 4th. Uh, they had determined that the soils at, uh, near the pool, which they couldn't obviously drill in the pool, but we drilled all around it, and they determined that the soils in that area were expansive soils. Uh, that would explain some of the structural problems on the east wall of the gymnasium at Sportscom and uh, why the pool deck, existing pool deck, has experienced such, um, such problems with settlement and cracking. As uh, their recommendation, which we have incorporated into the contract documents that were bid, is that the area, uh, the new pool area and the new, new deck area is all undercut two feet deeper than subgrade required and then backfilled with shot rock. That will provide the cushion to keep the new, uh, new concrete from experiencing the same problems as has occurred in the past. Uh, the third issue was um, there's about 220 feet of pool drain line, the 12-inch line, 
that through uh, the help of Murfreesboro Water and Sewer and their uh, scoping camera has been checked and determined that uh, it, it, we can't keep that line. It's uh, deteriorated. Uh, 26 years of chlorine water was more than it can handle. And, and the base bid for this is replacement of that 220 feet of 12 inch drain line. And those are the reasons why during the course of preparation of contract documents we found additional work and uh, it came in over budget. Any questions about what I've said? Vice Mayor. Uh, would you say, uh, Mr. Lynch, that you, you talk about expansive soils, that would be the, the, the spongy type soil that would raise and fall with, with it does. It changes volume with moisture content. So when you have periods of heavy rain, uh, it'll swell, and during dry periods, it'll settle. And then again, the soils engineer's recommendation was to put two feet of shot rock between any expanse of soils and concrete to uh, cushion that difference. And that's probably the, one of the bigger expenses digging that out and replacing mm -hmm. that. Is I haven't seen the bid, but I'd say that was probably one of the bigger ones. It is. Where does the drain line go, this 220 feet or whatever? Th that particular drain line is between, the, there's an indoor pool room and an outdoor pool room. Are you? I assume we're familiar with the building, so at the indoor pool room, that line <coughs> exits the building and goes under the pool deck of the outside pool and, uh, and, to the, uh, and through the uh, outdoor pool equipment room. And that's the line that was looked at and, like I say, in the contract documents, we have that to be replaced. All right, any other questions for Mr. Lynch? Mayor, maybe I, we talked about the age of this pool. Can you, I'm sure that this pool has been over 22 years plus or whatever. The life of that pool, is, that's probably a long life of a, of a swim, outdoor swimming pool. I, I, do you have any idea of what a normal life would be, or have, have we gotten uh, past our, our normal usage? Or planning to address that from your conversations with Councilman Hunsinger? Well, generally, Mr. Bratcher, a life of a pool somewhere around 15 to 20 years. Uh, given the fact that we've got the expansive soils, you go out and you look at the uh, decking. Uh, some places the decks have dropped at least three inches. Uh, what we've done over the past six or eight years is come in and actually used a material almost like a concrete bonding and feathered the edges in just so that the kids wouldn't trip. But now you see where the concrete is, is, is cracking, it's chipping. Uh, it, it's getting to the point that we can't put the Band-Aid on it right. anymore. So um, what he was talking about, about the pool drain, uh, it does run under the deck there at uh, the indoor pool, I mean the outdoor pool. So what we determined is instead of leaving the one that was questionable and maybe having to come back in a year, two years, five years, whenever that drain fails, and if it does, then it will add the moisture under the deck, which would cause the new deck to fall. It would be more prudent at this time to go back and change that pipe and ensure the life of that pool for the next 15 to 20 years. Other questions or comments? Is any of this work going to shore up the wall that we've got that has so much trouble? Uh, you talking about in the uh, Sportscom itself? No, sir. This this would not address that. The renovation of Sportscom would be. Uh, the next phase that we would want to bring to you uh, probably sometime later this year to, to look at uh, maybe first of next year. We, we talked about the, the change in our plans, but the two questions I have, one, right now, although we do have some handicap accessibility in the, the pool out there, but not as much, with going to the shallow end pool, does this increase our handicap accessibility? Yes, sir, it does. Okay. Uh, matter of fact, we're going to a zero depth area, uh, much like if you've been to Patterson, you know, the zero depth area there. Plus, we're uh, putting in a lift in the areas where we do not have zero depth. So we will increase. Matter of fact, everything that we have done in this pool brings us in compliance with, with, uh, with current code, uh, with ADA accessibility and health department compliance and those kind of things because a lot of things that are existing now at the pool 
I have been grandfathered. If we do any type of work out there, we would have to make those modifications. So some of the work we're doing, although we're having to renovate our pool system, some of it is bringing the pool system into you know a better standard. With Absolutely. And then our, my second well, question is, if we're going to go up 30 to 50 percent, which we hope we will, which will bring us more revenue, do we feel like we have adequate parking out there to handle that? Well, that was one of the things that we discussed uh, at the October 21st meeting. And our recommendation is to see what the increase is before going out and actually building additional parking. I know Mr. Bratcher had said that, you know, if we have additional parking that we may need, uh, we can actually bump out a piece of curb and, and gravel a portion until we uh, come back and reconsider that. But I wouldn't want to, at this point, I think, uh, recommend additional parking until I can come with certainty and tell you that, yes, we have increased 30 to 50 percent. We need an additional X number of parking areas, and uh, we would bring that plan back to you at that time. Other comments? Other questions? All right, you have this recommendation of the Parks and Recreation Director. May I move we approve the recommendations of the Parks and Recreation Director? Second. All right, you have a motion. Second. Any questions on the motion? If not, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Bratcher. Aye. Mr. Edwards. Aye. Mr. Gilly. Aye. Mr. McFarland. Aye. Mr. Washington. Aye. Mr. Young. Aye. Mayor Bragg. Aye. Thank you, Mr. Lynch. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Council. Thank you. I know that uh, Mr. Lynch had told the uh, contractors during the pre-bid meeting, be prepared to work seven days a week on this project. So we are shooting for that May 27th deadline. Right. No Thank change you. orders. Get it ready to be open. So. And Mr. Williams, you get out there with your camera and take pictures of all these underground pipes and wires and lines and things like that so we know where they are and what they look like. All right, thank you very much for being with us tonight. Consider for adoption now a resolution authorizing the filing of applications with the Federal Transit Administration and Operating Administration of the United States Department of Transportation for Federal Transportation Assistance authorized by 49 U.S. Code Chapter 53, Title 23 and other federal statutes administered by the Federal Transit Administration. Mayor Bragg, members of the City Council, Lines. this is a resolution that you have seen uh, annually. Uh, this is a vehicle we need to apply for the grants for our uh, public transportation system, otherwise known as Rover. Uh, as you know, um, much of that system is either federally or state funded, <laughs> and uh, we need this resolution to uh, send in to FTA to uh, apply for those grants. We did add a provision this year uh, that you know will allow us to continue to do so and not bring this back to you annually unless there is a change in uh, any of the named personnel here. So uh, with that recommendation, so we can continue to seek state and federal funding, we would ask for your approval. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. We have a motion and second to adopt this resolution. Please call the roll. Vice Mayor Bradford. Aye. Mr. Edwards. Aye. Mr. Gilly. Aye. Mr. McFarland. Aye. Mr. Washington. Aye. Mr. Young. Aye. Mayor Bradford. Aye. At this time, we'll consider for adoption a resolution expressing official intent that certain expenditures to be incurred in connection with certain public works projects and related expenditures for the purchase of a 75 foot aerial fire truck and equipment for the fire department be reimbursed from proceeds of notes, bonds, or other indebtedness to be issued or incurred by the city of Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Mayor, this provides for reimbursement for the second fire truck that you authorized at the last council meeting. You previously issued a reimbursement resolution for the first one. This just follows suit for the second. All right, thank you. Is there a motion? Move, re move, approve. Second. All right, you have a motion to adopt. Please call the roll. Vice Mayor Bratcher. Aye. Mr. Edwards. Aye. Mr. Gilly. Aye. Mr. McFarland. Aye. Mr. Washington. Aye. Mr. Young. Aye. Mayor Bragg. Aye. This time we'll consider for adoption a resolution requesting the Tennessee General Assembly to pass a private act amending the Murfreesboro City Charter regarding Office of City Treasurer. Ms. McGannon. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mayor, what you have before you is a resolution asking for a private act uh, amending the city charter to give the city council the option 
but not the requirement to have the offices of city recorder and city treasurer held by the same person and to provide for uh, the signatures on warrants or checks uh, would be from the city recorder, city manager, and mayor rather than specifically listing the city treasurer. As outlined in my cover letter, this reflects discussions that your senior staff had and the decision of your city manager that this would be appropriate, these discussions being begun because of uh, the personnel director uh, who serves as your city treasurer, Ms. Mahon's decision to retire, and consideration of whether or not the functions as city treasurer that she was performing, whether it made the best use of uh, personnel resources uh, to continue to have the city office performed by that department head. And so the suggestion, as expressed in my letter, is that the council tonight decide if they are comfortable with not having the city treasurer also serve as the personnel director because advertisement for the position of personnel director needs to begin and that advertisement should reflect whether or not that individual will also be expected to have the skills necessary and to perform the duties of the city treasurer. So the request is that you decide if you are comfortable with that tonight uh, as a matter in addition to uh, consideration of the resolution that is before you. We brought it to you tonight uh, in, in hopes of, uh, of agreement, but because in particular the legislative schedule of the General Assembly, we wanted to get it to them as quickly as possible. Um, I'd be happy to uh, address the uh, ideas or, or the wording of the proposed charter change, as I'm sure uh, Mr. Lyons would as well. Any questions or comments? Uh, I think all of us probably have been concerned or aware of the fact that we had the treasurer and the personnel department and we had the city recorder in the business office. So, uh, you know, I, frankly, from a hiring and firing point of view, the city manager and his staff need to work more closely with the personnel director, and that treasurer function could very easily be moved to the city recorder's offices. I think there are plenty of hands on board to make sure that we can keep the 30 plus odd accounts that we have uh, straight and that uh, based on the uh, awards of excellence that our city uh, budget folks and auditing have uh, received over the years for uh, fiscal management, I think we've done it and will continue to do a great job regardless of whether we've got a title stuck in one office or not. It's just the way I'm looking at it. So, I think it definitely make everything more efficiently run and and smoother, and hopefully, uh, it, it'll make it easier on staff to communicate with each other. So, I think it would be a, a good idea personally. But it's a streamlining and a more efficiency move to add to your comments. This mentioned seems to me. Mayor, I agree with all the comments that have been made, and with that, I would uh, move that we adopt this resolution. Second. All right. Are there any uh, questions? We have a motion and a second. Please call the roll, Ms. Wright. Vice Mayor Bradshaw. Aye. Mr. Edwards. Aye. Mr. Gilly. Aye. Mr. McFarland. Aye. Mr. Washington. Aye. Mr. Young. Aye. Mayor Bragg. Aye. This time we'll consider any beer permits. Mayor, we have three tonight. Um, there are a pharmacy chain, one at 2401 Old Court Parkway, and one at 2708 New Salem Highway, which are complete and have met all of our requirements. There's an additional location at 3010 South Church Street, which I received word this afternoon. I will get their <coughs> final inspections in the morning. They were approved this afternoon. Too late to do the paperwork. Um, these locations have never had beer there before, although they have existed for some period of time. So they're existing stores, they're just adding this item for sale? Yes, sir. There will be more to come. These are just the ones that are ready. All right. 
So all of these meet our requirements. Is there a motion that we accept these beer permits? Let be approved. Second. Motion and second. Please call the roll. Vice Mayor Bradshaw. Aye. Mr. Edwards. Aye. Mr. Gilly. Aye. Mr. McFarland. Aye. Mr. Washington. Aye. Mr. Young. Aye. Mayor Bradshaw. Aye. You have before you a list of the statements to be considered for payment. Are there any questions regarding any of these payments? And if not, is there a motion that we pay the bills? Move we pay the bills. Second. All right, you have a motion and a second. Please call the roll. Vice Mayor Bratcher. Aye. Mr. Edwards. Aye. Mr. Gelly. Aye. Mr. McFarland. Aye. Mr. Washington. Aye. Mr. Young. Aye. Mayor Bragg. Aye. Is there any other business from staff or the council to come before the council at this time? Anything else, Mr. Gilly? Mayor, I just want to comment. I think most all of us went today to the reception for our new school director, Dr. Linda Arms Gilbert, and uh, I think it's just phenomenal the uh, public uh, appreciation for her and her new endeavor and uh, the support that she's getting from the community. And, and from as a parent of a child in the system, I'm very excited that, that she's on board with us, and I think we all probably feel that way. Thank you. I'm sure all of us uh, echo that same remark and that uh, certainly we feel the same sentiment. It was a wonderful, it was an outstanding event. And my congratulations to Dr. Gilbert and to her family and my appreciation to uh, Principal Joe Thompson for uh, having everybody out there. I'm sure he wasn't uh, probably prepared to have everybody parking all over his yard and uh, and everything out there, but he certainly had a crowd. It was packed. He's probably doing a cake walk right now. Well, he, he, <laughs> if he's got a, a, just a little bite of cake left from the reception, he's probably enjoying it because he had a lot of work to do to get everybody there. And uh, so, again, our congratulations. Anything else? If not, you're adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>